Our last video looking at the entire career of Hulk Hogan ended at WrestleMania 8. The Hulkster took part in the Mania main event, working against Sid Justice while the WWF title was defended in the Ric Flair vs Randy Savage match. After WrestleMania 8, Hulk Hogan completely disappeared from the WWF, the wellness scandals were hitting the World Wrestling Federation at full force, and Hulk Hogan felt that now would be a good time to get out of the WWF and once again put all of his focus on Hulk. Hollywood. Hogan had a real desire to make movies and become a big Hollywood star, and with the feds coming down on the World Wrestling Federation in a big way, there was really no better time for the Hulkster to get out and try to make movies. Along with this, the Hulk Hogan character in wrestling had become stale, Hulkamania had slowed down as the 90s progressed, and it's evident that Vince McMahon was in search of a new top guy to carry the company forward. With the scandals going on, Vince would begin moving the company in a new direction, and just when we thought Hulk Hogan was yesterday's news, the Hulkster was once again brought back into the World Wrestling Federation at the beginning of 1993, and he was pretty much handed the WWF title, infuriating guys who had carried the company on their shoulders during Hogan's absence, in particular one Bret the Hitman Hart. Today's video will look at Hogan's 1993 WWF run, a strange story indeed that even to this day is still hard to make sense of. Now, just ahead so what we'll do here is look at everything that happened on TV first of all so we have a clear timeline of events and then we'll go back and try to piece everything together and try to understand why certain decisions were made. Most of the information we know about the WrestleMania 9 debacle and Hogan's exit comes from producers who are now in the podcast industry and we also have a lot of information from Bret Hart too but we also have to take everything with a pinch of salt. No one is really going to know the true ins and outs of this story other than Hulk Hogan and Vince McMahon, and both men have been relatively quiet about this period of the Hulkster's career. So now that that's out of the way, let's begin our look at Hulk Hogan in 1993. So let's check out what happened on TV first of all in chronological order. Brutus the Barber Beefcake made his in-ring WWF return on the 15th of February 1993 episode of Monday Night Raw, taking on Ted DiBiase of Money Incorporated. Money Inc, managed by Jimmy Hart, were the WWF Tag Team Champions at the time. They were one of the WWF's main heel tag teams, and if you want to learn more about DiBiase and IRS in the WWF, you should see a link on the screen right now to check out a video I made on Money Inc. Anyway, Brutus Beefcake ended up getting his face smashed in with a briefcase. Brother Brutus had previously taken time away from the WWF to have his face reconstructed after a parasailing accident, so Brutus getting his face smashed once again was supposed to be a big deal. Jimmy Hart showed concern for the barber. Jimmy had mostly been associated with heels in the World Wrestling Federation, so it was quite odd to see him being so sympathetic towards a good guy. The following week on Raw, Hulk Hogan Hogan would be in the building and he'd be addressing what happened to his friend Brutus, but it's the pre-recorded sit-down interview that took place earlier in the broadcast that's way more interesting. Hulk Hogan was coming back and before getting in the ring, Vince McMahon and Hogan decided they would address the wellness allegations on WWF television. Hulk Hogan said, when you're at the top of any field, whether it be business, entertainment, sports or sports entertainment, there's a lot of curious people who want to dig into your past and find out what you're all about. Well, when they dug into Hulk Hogan's past, they found out that Hulk Hogan is a human being. Hulk Hogan is not afraid to admit that he's made mistakes. On a personal level, I've made mistakes. On a business level, I don't always make the right decisions. And even on a peer pressure level, from when I was growing up through the 60s, 70s and 80s, I made mistakes too. We're in the era of the 90s and notwithstanding the legitimate media, there's a lot of tabloid terrorism going on out there. These are the people who dwell on the negatives and dig up any dirt they can. Even if the allegations are false, they report them anyway, and they don't care who they hurt as long as they personally gain from it. But thank god the Hulk and Maniacs aren't all about that, we dwell on the positives. 
You have to consider how this interview would have came across to younger fans who couldn't have cared less about the news and those young fans who wouldn't know what a wellness violation was. Hogan was admitting to making past mistakes and there were plenty of fans who still saw Hogan as an all-American good guy, yet here he was tearing down the media on a WWF TV show while admitting he has faults, something that we never would have seen during the mid to late 80s. It's an interesting piece of raw history that nobody talks about. Anyway, the Hulkster came out of the ring later on. The first thing he wanted to address was the attack on his good friend Brutus Beefcake and Hogan said that he was going to get revenge for Brutus by going after Money Incorporated. Brutus came to the ring showing off his battle scars and Jimmy Hart was also brought down to the ring, a now babyface Jimmy Hart. Together Brutus Beefcake and Hulk Hogan were known as the Mega Maniacs and with the Mouth of the South as their manager, the Maniacs were going after Money Inc and the tag team titles at Red WrestleMania 9. To be fair, I thought this was initially a great spot for Hogan to be in. I was glad that the Hulkster wasn't pushed straight back into the title picture, and if Vince McMahon felt that the star of Hulk Hogan wasn't shining as bright as what it once did, then it made sense to keep Hogan out of the title picture and let others have that spotlight. Bret Hart was our WWF champion at the time. The Hitman was on a mission to prove that the future of the WWF should be centered around athleticism and having good matches night after night. Brett wasn't about being larger than life, Brett could be considered the complete opposite to Hulk Hogan when we consider WWF champions of the 90s. Yokozuna had won the 1993 Royal Rumble and so the big man was getting a title opportunity at WrestleMania. Yokozuna had made his WWF debut at the end of 1992 and while he did fit the usual evil foreigner gimmick that Vince McMahon seems to love, there was no doubt that Yokozuna was a standout wrestler in his own right. Of course he had that incredible size but Yokozuna could also work around the ring, he understood his size was his greatest strength and so Yokozuna's matches throughout the first few years of his career were always quite the spectacle. The hitman Bret Hart had gained a huge following over the past year or so. The excellence of execution was on a different level when it came to in-ring storytelling. He had an excellent look that really fit in with early 90s WWF and the hitman gained a certain amount of respect from the fans that differed greatly from past WWF champions. The fans of the World Wrestling Federation admired Bret Hart's in-ring abilities and this admiration helped Bret captured the WWF title. There was also the wellness scandals that kind of pushed Vince McMahon into putting the belt on a smaller superstar, but anyway, Bret Hart was very much accepted as a high caliber WWF champion. Yokozuna had been dominant up until WrestleMania 9 and it did feel like the Hitman was going to get seriously tested on the WWF's biggest show of the year. Before the title match took place at Caesars Palace, the Mega Maniacs lost their tag team title match against Money Inc via disqualification. Placed right in the middle of the WrestleMania 9 card, Money Inc vs the Mega Maniacs ended when Hulk Hogan used Beefcake's protective mask as a weapon. Jimmy Hart tried to become the ref during the bout but an official ref came out and disqualified the Hulkster. Towards the end of the pay per view and just before the Bret Hart vs Yokozuna match, Hulk Hogan cut a promo where he said he just came from Bret Hart's locker room and he could see that Bret was ready to go. Hulk says that Bret is a Hulk a maniac and the hitman should keep his eye on Mr. Fuji during his match with Yokozuna. Hogan then issued a challenge to the winner of the match, whether it's Bret Hart or Yokozuna, a match we assume would be at a later date. Hogan then implied that Yokozuna would take the belt to Japan, but Bret would make sure the title stays in the United States. Keep this in mind, it's important later. Most of you will know the story here, Mr. Fuji ended up throwing salt in Brett's eyes while the Hitman had the sharpshooter locked in. This allowed Yokozuna to defeat the Hitman and become the new WWF Champion. This was the first time a heel won the main event at WrestleMania and it also ensured that the WWF had a new supervillain right at the top of the WWF ladder. But wait, Hulk Hogan comes down to check on Brett, Mr. Fuji challenges Hogan to step into the ring right there and then for a WWF title match. Brett 
that hams it up as if to say, go get him, Hulkster. Hogan gets in the ring, and around 15 seconds later, Hulk Hogan is the new WWF champion. Now, we'll come back to this later, but yeah, Hogan ended up leaving WrestleMania 9 as the new WWF champion, even though he hadn't been officially advertised for a WWF title match. And also, after only working two matches in around a year, the first was a house show tag team match against Money Inc., and the second one was the tag team match at WrestleMania 9. To say some people were pissed off would be a huge understatement. After winning the WWF title, Hogan didn't defend the belt at all until the 1993 King of the Ring. He didn't even defend it on house shows. The Money Inc. vs Mega Maniacs match was put on the road instead while the WWF title played second fiddle. One of the most prolific matches of this time period though happened a month after WrestleMania. Hulk Hogan went over to New Japan Pro Wrestling to face the Great Muda in a special WWF Champion vs IWGP Champion match. Remember earlier when Hogan was a free that Yokozuna would bring the WWF title to Japan? Well, here's Hulk Hogan bringing the belt to New Japan Pro Wrestling. Hulk Hogan even called the WWF Championship a toy and a stepping stone towards the IWGP Heavyweight title. Hogan tried to say that his interview where he said this was mistranslated, but he actually spoke these words on TV in English. Hogan naturally felt that his comments in New Japan work wouldn't make it far past Japanese audiences, but rest Wrestling tape traders have existed for just as long as what VCR recorders have. Plus today we have the internet available that has helped on more than one occasion to call out Hogan bullshit. Hogan defeated Muda at Wrestling Don Taku 1993 in an entertaining match, it's a real curiosity for sure, and it's another match where you get to see Hogan wrestling at his full ability. After his WWF run came to a close in 1993, Hogan went back to New Japan where he once again defeated Muda. This time Muda was working under his real name, Kijimoto, and the Hulkster and Muda teamed up on the same G1 Climax special to defeat the Hellraisers too. Anyway, let's go back to the States. That toy WWF title wasn't defended once until the King of the Ring pay-per-view. Hogan didn't work any singles matches, and it's all very peculiar to say the least. The Hulkster didn't even show up on Raw. He was featured in a bunch of pre-tapes. One of these was even from the set of Thunder in Paradise, and it really makes you wonder why the WWF even bothered putting the title on Hogan if he wasn't going to be around following WrestleMania. It makes you think that WrestleMania's ending was a quick fix. Anyway, at the King of the Ring in 1993, Hulk Hogan dropped the title back to Yokozuna after a dodgy cameraman shot a fireball onto Hogan's face from his camera. It sounds ridiculous, but this is exactly what happened. Hogan's face was burned and this gave Yokozuna an opportunity to score the pinfall win. The strap was taken off the Hulkster and it was placed back on Yokozuna. And so Yokozuna would begin a lengthy run with the WWF Championship. Many people think that this was the end of Hulk's run here in the WWF, and while we wouldn't see him on TV, he did work a house show series against Yokozuna around Europe. WWE producer Bruce Prichard was convinced that Hogan didn't go on this tour, but we have data and even video proof that Hogan was still in the World Wrestling Federation following the King of the Ring. The final date we have for Hulk Hogan in 1993 is the 6th of August. Hogan defeated Yokozuna via disqualification like every other match on this tour. Afterwards, it was reported that Brutus Beefcake, Jimmy Hart and the Hulkster all pulled out of their future WWF dates. All men were still under contract, but all men decided to sit at home. Hulk did have those aforementioned New Japan matches though, but there was no other wrestling dates until 1994. Okay, now we know what happened on TV, let's rewind back and try to make sense of the things that happened and why certain decisions were made. Firstly, Hulk Hogan's return at the beginning of 1993. You'd put this down to Vince McMahon simply not wanting a WrestleMania without Hulk Hogan. Hulk's acting career wasn't really taking off at the time, and the opportunity to come back into the World Wrestling Federation with minimal dates, a large payday, and a chance to win the WWF title once again was probably attractive enough to bring the Hulkster back into the company. Hulk disappeared previously due to the juicing scandal, so let's bring Hogan back and the very first thing he can do is address the fact that he made mistakes and it will all be forgotten. 
Next up, why did Hulk Hogan have to win the WWF title at WrestleMania? Well, I think we answered that already. Vince just wanted it. It was a bonus for Hulk coming back, and WrestleMania is typically ended with the victorious good guy providing a feel-good moment to send the crowd home happy. The bigger question then is why couldn't Bret Hart just defeat Yokozuna to gain the same audience response? Well, Hulk Hogan at the time was the stuff of WWF legend, while Bret was still really carving out his own legacy in the company. I certainly don't agree with Hogan winning the belt at WrestleMania 9, and I really think the WWF could have done better business down the road had Yokozuna defeated Bret, and then the hitman got his revenge at a later date. But Vince McMahon was falling back on what had brought him so much success in the past, and that was Hulk Hogan winning at WrestleMania. Bret got a little comfort by getting getting promised a WWF title match against Hogan at SummerSlam 93, where Bret would defeat the Hulkster and so the torch would be officially passed, but that obviously didn't happen. Bret wrote in his book that promotional photos were taken with the Hitman and the Hulkster to promote their SummerSlam match, apparently they were standing in between the WWF title and a tug of war pose, but it was all for nothing. Bret was, and still is, seriously pissed off at how things played out here. Bret thought Hogan was being selfish by not returning the favour, and I do believe that Bret got the short end of the stick here, seeing as he had broke new ground in the WWF by becoming a champion who relied on his in-ring skills more so than being an over-the-top cartoon character. Bret wanted change in the World Wrestling Federation, and it seemed like Hogan had swooped in and wrecked everything that Bret had worked for. You then had Yokozuna, this fierce upcomer who was making headlines as a top bad guy in the World Wrestling Federation. We make a big deal of how Bret Hart felt about WrestleMania 9, but we never consider Yokozuna. The guy had just won his first WWF Championship at WrestleMania. It should have been his moment, and the last picture we saw of WrestleMania 9 should have been that of Yokozuna standing over the fallen hitman. But that moment and lasting picture was also taken away when Vince McMahon went back in time to deliver another Hulk Hogan WrestleMania celebration. Granted, Hogan's crowd reaction after winning the championship at Mania 9 was incredibly good. The crowd in attendance thought it was great, and you can't really take away Hogan's pop at all, but it's cheap and hollow. It won't last, nor will Hulkamania carry the company for months to follow. There's no forward planning at all. It's an end to WrestleMania, really, and that's it. Long term, I personally feel that Yokozuna winning would have been the best for future matchups, and if that wasn't possible, then Brett winning to give that feel-good moment would have held more long-term weight. Hulk Hogan, out of all three options, would have been my last choice, but hey, it's all up for you to decide. Even Hogan celebrating with the Hitman after Brett successfully defended the title could have got the desired audience response, but anyway, it really doesn't matter now. As for the King of the Ring, the photographer Harvey Whippleman, you'd think that he would get revealed later down the road and Hulk Hogan or even Jimmy Hart would get some revenge here, but that was quietly shut down and the photographer angle went completely quiet. It's been said that Hogan decided to leave the WWF because business had gotten bad. His house show tag team matches against Money Inc. had drew poorly. Pay-per-view buy rates during late 1992 and 1993 had declined since the glory days of the mid to late 80s, and the Hulkster once again felt that he could make it in Hollywood. Vince McMahon later said that Hogan had told him that he was officially retiring, but Vince was also under the impression that Hogan would eventually return, just like he had done at the beginning of 1993. Hogan though truly thought that the Thunder in Paradise show was going to be a huge hit. His head was in Hollywood and being a star on syndicated TV. Mr. Nanny was also scheduled to get released and for whatever reason, the Hulkster felt his chances of further big movie roles was inevitable. Keep in mind too that if the WWF was tanking while Hogan was at the forefront, then some Hollywood producers might have felt that Hulk Hogan wasn't the draw that he once was. But if Hogan wasn't there and those ratings were declining, then Hogan could always say that he's the one who brought in the big numbers for the World Wrestling Federation. This leaves us with the impression that Hogan coming back for WrestleMania is quite a shrewd business move on Hogan's behalf. And so, for a while, Hulk Hogan did indeed stay retired, but as we all know, a meeting with Ric Flair and Eric Bischoff would change all of that in mid-1994. 
Vince McMahon, now understanding that he's lost Hulk Hogan, maybe went into panic mode when he tried to build himself a new all-American hero. Lex Luger was given the opportunity to fill Hulk Hogan's boots and become the number one star of the company, the big babyface that would move the WWF into the next era, but Lex Luger did not live up the expectations. Try as they might, the WWF noticed that Lex Luger was no Hulk Hogan, and so the company fell back on Bret Hart once again. The hitman defeated Yokozuna at WrestleMania 10 in 1994, while Luger's push was brought to a screeching halt. This wouldn't be the last time the company fell back on Bret Hart either, it happened after Diesel's WWF run in 1995. Still, as mentioned earlier, Bret never did forgive Hogan for setting out SummerSlam 93 and robbing the hitman of that Hart vs Hogan match, and I do feel it's a shame too, we instead got Lex Luger vs Yokozuna, and we all know how that turned out. So in the end, when all is said and done, and with the general narrative that's been pushed around WrestleMania 9 in this time period of the WWF, Hulk Hogan has came out of this 1993 run looking incredibly bad and it's very difficult to see it any other way. Hogan was looking after himself in many ways and when Hulk saw wrestling more as a lucrative business during this time in his career, you can see that the Hulkster was wanting to ensure that he remained relevant. If that meant taking the title at WrestleMania and ditching the company months later to have another go at making movies, then so be it. People see it as selfish, Hogan saw it as doing what was best for Hogan. Yokozuna ended up getting his title run in the end, but again, it's a shame his WrestleMania moment was taken away. And as for Bret Hart, well, Bret Hart became a legend in his own right without needing the Hogan match in the World Wrestling Federation. It would have been nice if it happened, but you have to imagine that the match would have ended in some sort of quick roll up, or there would have been some sort of bullshit interference that gave us the impression that Hogan didn't really lose. It would have been good to see Hogan vs Hart, but then again, when you really think about it, you can probably make a good guess of how the match would have played out anyway. So, if you want to continue on with the career of Hulk Hogan, I've already covered the next two parts. The WCW career of Hulk Hogan from 1994 right up until around mid-97 was already uploaded earlier in the year. I'll provide some links in the description and you should also see clickable links after the Patreon credit roll. The next Hogan video I'll put together will be Hogan's second year in the NWO, and then we'll look at Hogan's final matches in World Championship Wrestling. We still have a long way to go in covering the Hulkster's entire career, so I appreciate you watching these videos and sticking with this series. As always, thank you for watching.